Hi, I'm Lisa and I'm part of the Blackboard crew. I'm working as a cloud advisor as well as an internal controller. So um, I'm part of our finance department and that is actually the reason why I'm here today. Because today I want to show you the differences between Google Data Studio and Power BI reporting. Both tools are definitely in my heart. I do love those reporting tools. However, um, I do know that there are many, many more reporting tools currently on the market, especially with business intelligence uh, systems. Um, so let me know what kind of tools you like and just comment it um, below. And also we will write down their Power BI comment and a Data Studio comment. So just vote for the reporting tool you prefer. So this way we will have some feedback and I can prepare some further videos in the future. However, let's not lose some time and we will go directly into Google Data Studio. Um, first of all, and you can now follow my screen, um, you can see here what happens if we create a new report. Um, it usually opens a completely blank file or so-called report. And the first thing you have to do is to collect some data resources. So let us check what kind of data resources we can connect. So um, Google Data Studio comes in the G Suite and it was actually established in I think 2016. So um, we have it already three or four years almost. And um, during this time they established three kind of categories where you can find your connectors. The first one would be Google connectors that are like the typical ones which are uh, in the Google world. So you can see here Google Analytics, you see Google Ads, Google Sheets, BigQuery. So that's like uh, the typical Google connectors you can find. Then we have partner connectors that are connectors which are usually cloud tools from other partners. I think for us very useful for example is Copper, but I've also seen Instagram, YouTube of course is in there, um, Salesforce, but um, yeah, as you can see it's many 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 options you can choose from. And then we have the third group on the bottom, it's a little bit smaller, it's the open source connectors you can use. Um, I think in total it's already 100 60 or 180, I'm not so sure. So quite many, many data sources you can connect. And that's actually also the reason why we use business intelligence reportings, because now you are able to create one single source of truth, one reporting with different data sources. So, so you can create, for example, a report with your YouTube channel data, as well as your uh, sheet data from I don't know what you would put in there, but something reasonable, I would guess. Um, and let's check what I've already prepared for you. So I've prepared a very, very small dashboard and it really took me, I think, literally 10 minutes. And um, that's something that's very special for a Google Data Studio because um, it is very um, intuitive, very easy to understand. You can quickly create a visualization, so it really makes fun to go in there. And what you can see here is you can put in there almost 30 different kind of visualizations. For example, let me check. Oh, that it's here over here. You can see like different tables, uh, numbers, pie charts, uh, world map, uh, bubbles pivot tables, so you're really up to many different kind of visualizations, whatever you want to. And you, of course, can change the layout, the design. You can put your logo in there and put your CI in there and then everything matches perfectly with your colors. What is very cute is that you have like different dimensions you can work with. So, for example, if I go to the view mode, you can see here, if I go to this diagram, it will show me a small um, symbol to go down. <laughs> it's not a symbol, it's a, in German it's called file, but I don't have the English word. So let's go down here and then you see like the same uh, pie chart but with different segments and in a different dimension. So it's very cute, you can create one report and have so many different options so that every manager, however, however data he wants to find, he will definitely find it in here. 
And as I said, this is perfect for every manager. You are able to schedule like a automatically report for your managers so or for your team leads or team members, whatever. So you can say, for example, that every Monday at two o'clock, it should send out a PDF version of this current report. Makes sense. And what's also very nice, as I said, it's for, for free and you um, only share a link. So um, nobody needs to install anything. Nobody needs to have any licenses. It's very, very easy. On top of that, I think you can filter, for example, your data. So you could choose here like a time frame and then it would automatically um, fit all the data and show you only the data which were collected in December 2019 or whatever date you select. So this is very easy. And um, that is something you will also find in Power BI. So let us just quickly go through um, the bigger brother, so-called Power BI from Microsoft. It was actually created, I think, in 2013. So it's a little bit older and uh, they had quite some years to put more complexity and work in it. Um, so let's see what they have created since then. So first of all, they come in three kind of versions. So first thing is we have a desktop version, we have a cloud version as well, and we have a mobile app. And uh, I do really like the mobile app because now you are able to just quickly check your data within seconds, especially when you're on your way to new work, uh, digital with your mobile phone on your way. So um, that is something Google Data Studio is not offering as of now. You can, of course, find some workarounds of the, uh, around that, but um, still, you will always see that it's not optimized for mobile usage. But what else is different? Um, as I told you, those three kind of um, versions also come with a pricing uh, strategy. So you are able to use Power BI for free and there is a free version for that. But um, in this version, you're only able to create your own report. You're not able to share it with other colleagues. So from my perspective, it doesn't really make sense to create a report just for you um, as you usually want to share it. Um, and this way you are more or less, yeah, you have the need to go definitely with a pro version. And it's about right now, I think, eight euro 40 per user per month. So it's quite expensive, um, but therefore it comes with some features which are very, very useful and definitely recommend. So first of all, um, as you can see here, I've created a more or less similar chart or report over here. There are three categories on the corner. So the first one is the report I have open right now. Then we do have data. So you are able to have a look which data are the base for your report, that it's very nice. And this one here, it's called model. You see the different charts you have, not, not charts, but files you have in there. So right now you see I have two files and I would be able to connect um, them afterwards and I am able to create new columns to merge them. So um, it is very easy to upload many kind of different files and data sources and connect them afterwards. And that is something that is very different to Google Data Studio. So Google Data Studio is created for files which are already cleaned up and very uh, easy. And it's, it is able, but very complicated to, um, to connect those data afterwards. And I will directly show you why this connection is so sweet. So um, right here, if I press one of those uh, colors, you see that the entire reports will fit to the um, selection I've made. So for example, now I've uh, pressed the button for the product paseo and all the other charts like the sales per year, or the world map will automatically only filter for the product per sale. And that's very, very cute because that makes it easy to have a quick overview about each product, about each country, about any data you want to. And that is definitely something that is only able in Power BI. Okay, so besides 
that, you are of course also able to enter quite many data sources into this um, report, not only files, but, and I will just quickly open it, quite different categories. So in total, they are grouped in six different categories. The first one, and I've already told you about it, are files, like you can put your um, Excel file in there, PDF, uh, Word, whatever you want to. Then we have a uh, data bank or a data source um, that would be, for example, an access data source. You could use SAP or SAP, IBM, and that quite, quite easily. So that makes a lot of sense for huge enterprises or bigger companies because they are usually working with this kind of data sources. Then you have power platforms, uh, Azure, and some online services as well. Of course, you can connect it to SharePoint, you can connect it to things like Salesforce again, also Google Analytics, Facebook, LinkedIn, um, I think that's Zendesk, for example. So there are quite many um, connectors and I think it's almost the same amount of Google Data Studio, but in Google Data Studio, they are mainly focusing on tools which are compatible with um, Google and Microsoft of course is focusing on tools which are um, fitting into the Microsoft universe and are out of the Google world but not entirely so you have seen that there are some Google tools as well. Okay so last but not least I think uh, you see the number of visualizations is almost the same you can press the same, but you're also able to import your own template or um, select a visualization from a different sheet and that's also very cute. However, um, I think that is enough for a very, very quick introduction to the differences between Power BI and Google Data Studio. Um, let me know your feedback, this way we will know where to dip in a little bit deeper. Yes, so let me just quickly summarize it for you guys. I think if you are um, limited by your budget and you just want to create a very simple but beautiful report, then you sh should go definitely with the Google Data Studio. It's very easy to create something very, very fast and it's definitely good if you are already using G Suite, then it's like a dream to use. Um, on the other hand, if you have like more complex data, maybe uh, many a whole bunch of Excel files you want to create and match, then I would definitely recommend Power BI and you are in general able to create way more specifications in Power BI. So I think both tools are already very good, but both of them can be improved and um, let me see or let us see what the future brings and then um, I will keep you posted.